Yo, yo, YouTube. When I was younger, I used to really enjoy yo-yos, and not that I was ever particularly good at them. They were fun to play with, and getting this lathe got me thinking that it would also be fun to make one. I got these big pucks of aluminum a while ago, but never ended up getting around to it until now. As always, the project starts off with a quick facing cut. I didn't know what the final hole size should be for the axle, but I wanted to go ahead and drill it all the way through in the beginning since I'm making both sides from the single piece, it would make sure that the centers are lined up. Now I need to remove some material and weight from the first side to also start forming the traditional yo-yo shape. and this handle finally fell off. Looking closely at it, we can see that the entire handle is split. I'm not sure what caused this, but it's preventing the handle from being able to properly grip the gear shaft. And this was actually a problem right out of the box. Unfortunately, both of the plastic control dials were cracked, but it doesn't seem that this is affecting how they work too much, at least at this point. Well, now it's affecting how they work, so keep an eye out for the project to make a new one of these handles. But in the meantime, so I can finish this yo-yo, I'm just going to put it back on the best I can. It should work well enough for now. Now that the dished part for one side is finished, I wanted to true the outside diameter. The internet says that the standard yo-yo diameter is around 55mm, and this stock is already pretty close to that, so I didn't want to take off any more than what was needed to true the outside. I also wanted to do this now, because again, since both sides are going to be made from this single piece, it will guarantee that the reference hole in the middle and the outside diameter are perfectly concentric for both sides which is an important aspect in this project. I also did a quick initial polish while everything was still together. The thickness of the first side was picked rather arbitrarily as I just needed it to be slightly thicker than the dished part and thin enough to have room to part off the second side later on. I've had problems parting larger diameters before, potentially due to the amount of flex in the tool post, so after the circuit breaker popped the first time, I just decided to use the channel from the parting tool as a guide and hacksaw the rest of the way through.
With the first side removed, it's time to rinse and repeat for the second side, again starting with a facing cut. I had to be a bit more conscious with my cuts the second time around as I needed to make sure I matched the first side. Also, I tried to give myself a little bit of extra material in order to have the room for some finishing cuts to bring it to the final size. With the design on the inside of the dish being relatively freeformed, I think they match pretty well. Just a quick trim and it will be ready for parting. I decided to part the second side off in the same way as I did the first side. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I've needed a new hacksaw blade for a long time, and you'll be happy to hear that cutting off the first side was enough to make me go buy one.
A quick change of the chuck jaws will let me finish the back side of each of the sides. I got this high speed steel tool in a small set of pre-ground tools off eBay that was ground in a fillet shape and I thought this would be a perfect time to use it. As with everything in this project, all the work has to be done twice. The sizes and shapes of the two sides turned out to be pretty much indistinguishable from each other. And while I can't guarantee the distribution of the weight is the exact same on each side, I wanted to at least make sure that the two sides were relatively close to each other to prevent the yo-yo from leaning to one side or the other when using it. Turns out I did pretty well and the two sides are within three thousandths of an ounce of each other. All in all, these are nearly identical and a great start to this project. They will require some extra finishing to remove the remaining sharp edges and stuff, but the next steps are to create the axle, axle nuts, and to figure out how it all goes together. So if you've liked this video, please hit that thumbs up, and if you're interested to see how the rest of this project goes, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss it. I also love hearing your feedback, so be sure to leave a comment if you've learned anything, can teach me anything, or just want to say hey. Stay tuned for part two, and as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.